Okay, we're working on the section here that's going to discuss the end behavior of a polynomial function for you. And for instance, I have a linear equation graphed. And when we talk about end behavior, we are going to talk about the end of this line. What does it look like? And then the end of this line on that part of it. Well, when we want to look here, uh, we have the equation y equals negative 3x plus 5. And so when we discuss end behavior, we want to talk about two parts. f of x, as it approaches uh, positive infinity, f of x as it approaches positive infinity. And so when we look there, you should be thinking that as f of x is approaching positive infinity, what does f of x mean? Well, f of x means y. You've been um, conditioned to understand that y is equal to negative 3x plus 5 is the same as f of x is equal to negative 3x plus 5. So you should correlate f of x to y. And so now f of x deals with the y as it approaches positive infinity. And so let's look here at the, um, over here at our chart. Positive infinity means it's going up. So in this direction, our chart is going up. Now these are the y's and these are the x's. So our chart's going up. Uh, let's see, negative 25, negative 16, negative 7, 2, 5. And so that means f of x is going up towards positive infinity. And we can continue the table on and on forever. Well, if we look at the line, f of x is approaching positive infinity in this direction. Because what's happening to the y values? The y values are going up as it's followed along this line. So, f of x approaches positive infinity as x approaches what? Now, we're either going to put positive or negative infinity here. So, we notice as y goes up, as f of x goes up towards positive infinity, what's happening here at the x values? Well, they are going down towards negative infinity. And so that is part one of describing the end behavior of this linear function. And now let's look at part two. If part two deals with, I'm sorry, if part one dealt with f of x approaching positive infinity, well let's let f of x approach negative infinity. Well, once again, the y values now are going towards negative infinity. If we go in this direction, what are the x values doing? The x values are going towards positive infinity. And so when we look at the graph here, well, we know x is approaching positive infinity. When we look at the graph, we notice the y values are going down Yes, we go in this direction. But what do you notice about the x values from looking at the graph? 2, 4, and remember it's going in that direction. 6, 8, 10. They're approaching positive infinity. And so there's how you describe end behavior of that linear function. I related the spreadsheet here on the right side to showing you uh, using a table of values to do it also. You should become more accustomed to using the um, just the graph. And so let's look at a different type of graph. Let's get rid of this one. And I'm using a program called GeoGebra. GeoGebra does a lot of um, does graphing, it does spreadsheet, it does algebraic functions for you. 
so it can be quite helpful at some point. So let's look here. Let's look at this function. Let's look at y equals x to the third power plus x to the second power plus 2x minus 3. And there's our graph. And so every time you do end behavior, it will always start out f of x approaches, you can have positive infinity. as x approaches, and then f of x will approach negative infinity as x approaches. And now, all you have to do is fill in. Your only two choices for both of them are going to be positive infinity or negative infinity. So, let's look here. Um, it's going in this direction, and so if we look in that direction, the y values are going down, so that's going down towards negative infinity, which means f of x is going towards negative infinity. This is the one we're working with. f of x approaches negative infinity as x, and if we notice what's happening to the x values as we go down this graph, or down this function, the x values are also going down. And if we continue down off the screen, the x values will continue down, and we know that this function never stops, so it is approaching negative infinity. And let's look at the, the one going up in this direction. Well, we know f of x is approaching positive infinity, so we're working with the top one at the moment. And uh, so we're working with the top one. As f of x approaches positive infinity, what's happening to the x values? The x values, you notice they are getting larger, and they are heading towards positive infinity in this case. So that's the end behavior. You could make a table of values and compare the x and y's and look at them, and that might help you out. But you should be able to do this quickly with the graph. All right, let's get rid of this one and let's look at one more. Let's go uh, y equals let's just go y equals x squared. y equals x squared. And so if we look here, let's discuss the end behaviors. Well, in this case, f of x is approaching, um, it's going up on the y-axis, so f of x is approaching positive infinity, keep wanting to put a comma in there, as, well, if f of x is approaching positive infinity and we're talking about this, uh, that arrow there, what's happening to the x values as it goes along? Well, we notice the x values keep going down, so that would be x approaches negative infinity. And let's look on the right side. Oh, this one's also going up. The y values are also going up. Notice how they're going up? So, once again, we have an f of x approaching positive infinity. And once again, I tried to put a comma in there. 
as x approaches, we'll look at what's happening to the x values here. As we keep going up in the function towards positive infinity, the values for x are also going up towards positive infinity. So there's the end behavior you have for that function. That's basically all we have for you at the moment.